Okay, just a quick uh, first ride impression video. Um, so I just got done with a 10 mile hard as I could go ride on the gravel iteration of my Hyper 1x9 mountain bike. And uh, basically it's in gravel mode now, really just switching the tires and rims, uh, the wheel set out as you might have seen on the other video. <clears throat> Um, impressions. It was much easier to maintain a high road speed, as you would imagine. I did stay on asphalt the whole time with tiny gravel patches here and there, but I was averaging just under 15, 14.9, and um, not too hard. I mean, I was working hard, riding hard, but but I could have gone a little faster, I'm sure. And the tires were pumped up to um, 70 rear on the AT ride, and the front was at 60. So these tires will both go to 85 PSI. So if you had laser smooth pavement, you could gain some efficiency there. But um, as soon as the road turns gravel, these tires don't even flinch or blink. So um, that's, uh, so I'm going to rate these as excellent. I have been riding the front one for a, a couple, three weeks now. But this is the one that came in the mail just yesterday. Um, it's the AT ride. These are like a trekking tire in 700 c by 42 okay so it's a, actually a decentish width without being too wide um you start getting up closer to two inches or 50 uh c tires and they're they start to look like mountain bike tires but this is truly one that's squarely in between a fat 28 road tire and a two inch mountain bike tire and that th these knobs you don't even feel them when you're riding i couldn't even tell it was a knobby tire it felt the same way as this one did. I do have a, another one of these that was on the rear. That's kind of a light file tread with side knobs. And the speed ride gets, if you read the reviews online for that, it gets really good reviews from people who even take them in ice and snow. These little knobs do real good in mixed surfaces, ice and snow and so forth. But it's super high efficiency and um, really transform the bike. So my whole goal was a bike where I could, instead of having to go buy a, a drop bar, special purpose gravel bike like some of the guys in my club have i can hop on this thing and stay with them even if they're on drop bar bike all right so that's kind of the, the whole point of this project and this conversion and um the one by nine does a great job um <clears throat> give a quick review of that um what i've done here is now if this may or may not apply to the bikes you have this was a one by nine from the get-go but hyper being a, a Walmart branded bike, Walmart marketed bike. Um, it had kind of a low grade stamped one piece crank and uh, front chain ring, creaky open bearing bottom bracket, just terrible. Um, so what I did was I went with this 32 teeth. I kept the same amount of um, teeth on the chain ring so the gearing would be about the same or remain unchanged. But I went ahead and got a um, IXF uh, crank, which is kind of a, a Chinese version of the Holotech uh, that you get from uh, Shimano, and that did um, absolutely great. You've got an axle that goes through now, and the, um, pardon the cats and dogs are invading my scene here. Um, the uh, no more bottom bracket creaking, pedaling is perfect. It's got an XO bearing, so you get the bearing cups that go in there. Uh, the screw into the, the black part you see there in, in board of the crank. They screw right into your threaded bottom bracket, um, and it's a perfect fit. It's, and I got a shout out to Kev Central. Um, Kevin showed me two things. He showed me this bike to begin with. The Kev Central review for the Hyper Explorer 29er was very influential, and he rated it highly. Um, and he also mentioned putting the IXF crank on there, and I concur with his review. That's a great crank. Um, love it, love it, love it. No more creaking, smooth, and fast. Now, the on my rear wheel here, what have I done? Okay, I've kept the same 9-speed Shimano shifter and the uh, Falcon Saker derailleur that came on the bike. And I haven't changed any of the gearing in terms of numbers, but this wheel, being a giant, show you here, a giant PR2 wheel that came off a giant road bike, um, I had to mount a 9-speed cassette. Now, thankfully, MicroShift... The Taiwanese company, they make a really good, what's called the Advent 9-speed cassette. And the Advent 9-speed is what you see right here. And I, I really like the spacing, maybe even a little better than the 9-speed free whale that came stock on this bike. And what I like better about the MicroShift um, cassette here, and of course a cassette 
has to match the wheel. So this is not a threaded freewheel hub on this uh, particular wheel set. Um, so I had to go purchase this nine speed cassette. It wasn't bad though. It was just $40 on Amazon. And what you have here is it goes smaller. Okay. It's 11 tooth to 42. Whereas the freewheel version that's on my mountain bike uh, tires that came on this bike stock is a 14 to 42. And so you have very limited road speed. Of course, you don't care as much because of big mountain bike tires. How much are you really riding, trying to ride fast on the road? But this allows for a higher speed. And um, there you have it. Once again, in case you've hit in this video first and missed my other one, this bike has the uh, wheel and dropout spacing standard that allows you to take disc road bike wheels, typical ones, and put them on the mountain bike, thus making a gravel trekking uh, mixed use bike. I guess we could call it hybrid. I don't really like that word, but, but that's uh, kind of what it amounts to. And what you're looking for there is your wheels should be 100 millimeter in the front. That's the diameter between the dropouts, between the front fork dropouts. Um, and the diameter of this here, if you were to pull that cap off there and measure it, nine millimeters. And in the back, it'll be the same axle size, nine millimeters, but it's going to be 135 millimeters between the dropouts, between the blue portions of my frame there. And I'll show you this over here. I've got the stock wheel set sitting right here. Okay, so this is the relatively decent stock wheel set that um, the Hyperbike came with. And, of course, that's, you know, more of a mountain-style hub. The ones over there that I just showed you in the bike are, of course, a little bit more of a road-style hub. But the nice thing is they fully interchange. And that makes this an incredibly versatile bike because you put these um, heavier wheels on there, much more aggressive tread. You're ready to go shred some off-road trails. Um, they do weigh a lot more. Um, in fact, the fastest speed I've ever had riding this bike with these wheels here the heavier mountain wheels is uh, 13 miles an hour on a, you know, rolling hills, asphalt, gravel situation. 13 is all I could do. <clears throat> In this bike, I just did 15, basically. Now, the wheels are uh, almost four pounds lighter. They are four pounds lighter, this wheel set. So there's an idea for y'all. A little mini review of the Hyper Explorer. It is a very good bike. Um, it has it can be converted between gravel and mountain. Okay, so please uh, tell us in the comments below if this has been helpful or what your thoughts and ideas are. Uh, take care, y'all. God bless. Bye.